Hey everyone, Pupsker here, and today I wanted to go over, is Warframe worth playing in 2024? Let's do a Warframe review. I'll show you the game, some gameplay all over, talk about a lot of the different sides of the game, because I know a lot of people are playing the game or trying to check it out because of both First Descendant releasing and Destiny 2's news of it slowing down. So let's get into it. First and foremost, of course, is gameplay. If you want to play Warframe, of course, you'll want to enjoy gameplay. Gameplay is pretty general. There's a lot of side game modes, right? You have space battles, you have spaceships, you have mechs in the game. But the base of the game is you have your Warframe, your character, four abilities on that character, right? You have weapons, melee, and you have like primary secondary weapons. You also have an arc gun and many different types of guns, but the game is a fast paced looter shooter and it's not necessarily a hard game once you get into it, but it might start off slow and more difficult because early game is very confusing and it's a lot of a grind. But you might notice just via playing the game, there's a lot of like visual noise. It is a very messy game. Always damage numbers going on, always abilities going off. You have multiple abilities on your characters. Doesn't mean you have to use them all the time, but all characters will have their four abilities. You can swap abilities out on different characters as well, one at a time. So there is a system to have different abilities on all the different characters, but not full range of different abilities. Just one possible one per Warframe, swapped out at a time. It's a pretty interesting system. <clears throat> there are a ton of game modes in the game. A lot of them will probably boil down to defend or kill enemies one way or another. There's a lot of variations on a defense type game mode. There's a lot of variations on a kill type game mode, but that's like the general idea of the game, right? You're going to be murdering things and then you're going to be protecting, defending things. And all game modes are kind of variations on kill, grab stuff or defend, protect stuff one way or another, right? So that's the generals of the game, right? Oh, what do you think? You have scroll wheel bars here throw out something like an on-call crew AI uh, companion to help you out. You have a ton of equipment, abilities, and items, like I can deploy an arc gun, which is a space weapon, another type of gun, and then I can just blast everyone with my laser here. So I would say Warframe, pretty interesting game if you haven't played it yet. The game's been out for, I would say, I guess fully released about 11 years now. It's probably been in development, right? 12, 13, 14 at this point. And my god, does that mean the game's gone through a lot of stages? Games started off really slow, calm, quiet, and then it slowly progressed through and became a pretty popular game. I would say it's a uh, number two looter shooter behind Destiny 2, if we're like categorize, categorizing like that. Borderlands 2 is also like up there if it was like a live service and more active, but obviously Borderlands 3 and Borderlands 2, it's been a long time and it's, you know, not popped off for a while, but... That is the generals of how you play the game of Warframe. Run around and kill things, and run around defend things, killing things. That's the visuals of the game. I'm running it at like high settings, pretty much. I think I run it 144, 120, yeah, 144 FPS. And then obviously I record it down to 60 FPS. And a lot of the game boils down to loot collection, right? That is the game. It is a looter and a shooter. If we take a look at how much there is to collect, you have your overall account level, your mastery rank level right here. This is your like character account level, not your individual Warframe level, but your character account level. So every single item in equipment, you level it up to the max level once, and that is how you get account level out of it. Mastery rank, if you will. You also get a mastery rank account level through basic game objectives. Quests, completing every map in the game once. Every map completion gives you a little bit of mastery rank for the first time completion. Quests and other systems to level up in the game. But by default, the game has 744 or so items to fully level up and grind out in the game. I might be missing one or two that are hidden or don't show up, such as like Excalibur Prime and Prime starting weapons that you can't obtain anymore, but this is the game, everybody. A lot of it will be collecting weapons, collecting Warframes, leveling up your weapons, leveling up your Warframes, and doing different builds on all of your weapons and Warframes, because 
I'm sure you can imagine, with 744 variants of everything in the game, holy is there a lot to level, a lot to farm, and a lot to grind, so... You don't have to do anything by any means. It's recommended to your mastery rank. You get it up to 16 and then 18. And then that's the hard cap for being able to unlock everything in the game. And yeah, you do not have to have to do everything. It's such a huge grind. Legendary rank four right now is the max mastery rank, which is legendary rank 34 essentially. And it takes so much time to get there. It's comparable to First Ascendant and how big of a grind it is. The difference between Warframe and First Ascendant, if anyone has played it, is Warframe has more stuff to grind, but it'll take you less time to grind things individually. And overall, it'll take less time to grind things out. Whereas First Ascendant just came out, it takes a lot of time to grind things per item and it takes a lot of time to do everything. So this game, you'll get things faster and unlock everything much faster. But there's a lot more to grab, which will take more time. So depending on what type of game you're going for, this is a power fantasy looter shooter with somewhat very easy to obtain loot overall in the game. Whereas First Descendant is pretty similar. Looter shooter, less power fantasy, but still power fantasy. And it takes you a lot of time to grind it out. Destiny, I would say, is less of a power fantasy looter shooter and more of just like a RPG MMO light styled looter shooter. More like, I guess... Borderlands or, well, it's like Halo, but MMO RPG light. So all great games, all worth trying out if you're looking for them. All pretty common and talked about looter shooters, at least right now in 2024. So yeah, let me know what you think of that. There are so many weapons. I think in total there are 57 or 56 Warframes. And out of that, there are about 40 Prime Warframes. So if we're just looking at Warframes in the game, it has a hundred or so. Yeah, about a hundred right there. Prime Warframes are straight up just better versions of the base Warframe. They'll have a little bit better base stats such as health, armor, maybe movement speed, energy. So once you obtain a Prime Warframe, such as let's say Rhino Prime, right? Once you obtain Banshee Prime, there's no real need to ever use base Banshee again once you max her out to level 30, max level in the game, because you do that for the mastery rank. So that's the systems of leveling in the game, and holy, are there so many weapons. It's the same with weapons for the most part. You have base weapons such as Astilla, and then you have prime variants, Astilla Prime, and you have a billion other type of variants in the game. You have Kuva, you have Tenant weapons. The amount of variation the game has now with different styles of weapons is insane. It is a looter shooter power fantasy, as I was saying. So that means a lot of the time you can build your Warframe, this dude right here, or your weapons to just straight up kill everything, right? I know a lot of people like to collect and keep the base variants, but this is a free to play looter shooter, which means you're gonna hit a lot of monetization caps. You can collect Warframe slots and weapon slots in the game, and you can also trade for platinum in order to buy more Warframe or weapon slots. But Early on in the game, you will be capped out on how many Warframe and weapon slots you can obtain naturally in the game outside of trading for Platinum or straight up buying it. So those are like the monetization hard caps that you'll hit in the game early on. But my God, let me show you the map first off. I'm slowly going to be showing you everything. So jump throughout the video if you're curious. No timestamps because there's no real method to my madness. Maybe I'll timestamp it, but I'm just gonna be looking at all the stuff in the game and I'll let you decide whether you like it or not. And that's why I wanted to show off base gameplay first off. The game has a battle pass, completely free to play. There is no paid path. All it is is complete quest, essentially weekly and dailies in game. You collect a lot of loot. There are items that you'll need and are harder to farm. You have weapon slots, cosmetics, Warframe slots, a ton of cosmetics, one-time like unique items in the battle pass that'll return to the game later, but hey. You have items that are like Umbra Forma, very rare in the game, made for good upgrades. And then the shop also just has a straight up shop so you can continue leveling, collect coins to buy stuff out. It's a pretty good system overall and all of your weekly daily acts, they refresh so if you fully do them in a week, it'll start backlogging them and then you just keep completing them. So it's one of the nicer battle pass systems where you can just 
keep grinding it out if you show up halfway or near end of season. And these refresh every like six months usually. It's a pretty calm leveling system and it's pretty easy to do. But this is the entire map of Warframe. We'll talk about it. The game can be fully played, public, friends, invite, solo. Here's where you can, uh, and swap around in other places, your builds, your characters, your weapons, your companions, their weapons. But this is the whole map. You have clans and a clan dojo, very useful. I would recommend every single person in the game joins a clan. It's not that Destiny 2 is falling down, it's that Destiny 2 has essentially slowed down their production and their main storyline is over. So the game's gonna, no matter what, calm down, slow down, and have less players. So just a matter of fact, Destiny 2 is on its slow grind to end their series with more Bungie games. So it is what it is, am I right? We have Zeremin in Warframe, which is a whole content area, an island, a whole faction system. There are shops, there are NPCs and quests and everything for this area on the Chrysalith. A lot of this game revolves around map and map areas, right? So you have the Chrysalith, which is like a main player hub. And then you have all of the missions that you go into. And you also have a Dorma Zone, which is like an apartment that you can decorate and make look very cool. So that's the systems that this game tends to do for expansions and updates for bigger expansions and DLC, if you will. It is a faction system with shops and a reputation and a lot of missions to run around it and quests and objectives to do to obtain weapons and loot on this area. That's pretty normal. We have this entire map. We have the void here, which is used to collect high quality primes, uh, relics, and a lot of other items, uh, Argon. So just maps where you can grind to get more loot. You have regular planets all over the place, such as Mercury, Venus, right? Ceres, Jupiter, Europa, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, Pluto, Eris, Phobos, Mars, Kuva, Fortress, Sedna, Deimos. These are all like normal planets like Lua in regards to Warframe gameplay, but some of them have a more player-centric uh, open world player hub, such as Venus. It has Fortuna, which is an open world hub to just grind out stuff, right? It's the same as Zeremin. You go to Fortuna, it has shops, NPCs, and maybe like a couple quest objectives to do. And then you run Orb Valis. And this is a Warframe open world area, but not a true open world. It's just essentially a large open map where you can grind out bounties, quests, missions, if you will, all the same word for what they are, bounties. The game has space combat, if you go to areas such as Montes, purely Arcwing space combat. And then from there, there's another open world hub and mission area on Earth, another one, actually two on Deimos, and even more throughout the game. But this is the maps of Warframe. The objective when you're starting off the game, you'll start on Earth and you're gonna start on normal mode. The game has something called Steel Path. As you can see there, you get more loot. It's essentially hard mode. Enemies hit harder, they're tankier, and you get more loot, right? Normal stuff, normal stuff. In order to unlock Steel Path though, hard mode, you have to pretty much be fully caught up with the game's main storyline and complete every essentially mission in the game on normal mode once, apart from like a handful of them, but you'd really have to go do a search on Google and find the map of what you specifically don't need to run. But that's how you unlock hard mode. And it will take you tens of, if not hundreds of hours to just go throughout the game and farm everything. Unless you very specifically tar target farm it, then you can maybe get it done under 100 hours. But just to let you all know, the first 10 hours of this game is probably the slowest, worst part of the game, which really sucks. It's learning the game, getting used to playing the game, grinding out some Warframes and weapons, and becoming strong. That's like the first 10 hours, and a lot of it's just like, you're confused, you don't really know what's going on, it's, it's very odd, right? So, that means everybody, you just have to, if you want to, play through it, take your time and grind it out, I know. Outside of this being the main mission area, there's a side island called Duveri Paradox. This was a main huge expansion pack or DLC expansion update. This was essentially a roguelike open world type game mode with another open world hub that can be accessed on the Zeremin or well shops and stuff or throughout this area. 
You have the Circuit, which is essentially just Warframe combat stuff. Duviri Experience, which is a roguelike drifter, more calmed down combat experience, okay. And then you have Lone Story, which is a pretty much mission to mission, fast speed run of the Duviri Experience. All good to run, all good to get loot. And you can actually run and unlock Duviri Paradox in Warframe very early on, even though this was like the latest three years ago, two years ago type expansion pack. One of the latest, I should say, not the latest, right? It is actually unlockable very early on in the game because this game is a very weird looter shooter setup. It's not point A to point B. It's like point A to point whatever the hell to eventually you end up in point Z where you're pretty much done the game or fully caught up to the game. It's a confusing, weird game, okay? It is going to take you some time to get used to it, and you might not like it, and that's completely valid, completely fair. Not everyone has to like every game. Oh yeah, daily reminder, I do have an Epic Games Creator Code. If anyone plays any games on the Epic Games Store, you can use Epic Games Creator Code Pupsker to support the channel. Just a quick shout out, if anyone wants to be nice, thank ya, thank ya. But this is one of the DLC big expansions in Warframe. Just a huge roguelike open world. You run missions, you choose uh, boons or decrees in this game, call them what you will. They give you an upgrade, and then when you fully leave the area, you lose all of your decrees because they were that roguelike experience upgrade. And then you start all over again, right? You can choose randomized Warframes, and it shows you which there, and you can choose randomized weapons, and that's how you get your starting loadout from the predetermined randomized weapons and war weapons Warframes and everything, right? So Warframe has a full-on roguelike experience expansion pack, and it's actually pretty fun, but again, you might hate it. Or you might love it, you might love it. And it also has, if we're just finishing off the entire map of the game, essentially, a space battle expansion. It's not the best, but it is pretty fun depending on if you like it or not, right? If you're looking for a more hands-on space combat, you might not like this, but it's a more casual, easy, simple, shoot at ships, fly around, destroy them space combat experience. It's not gonna be like Gundams or anything, no, no. You have your spaceship, and then you have you flying around with guns. So you can do space battles, Pluto, right? All these areas, there's a full quest line and expansion to go with it, because it was like a big DLC drop, expansion if you will. It has open world relays where you can take off and upgrade your ship. From there though, you just run missions. And it also has hard mode on this, by the way. Oh, wait, no, it doesn't. There is no steel path. There's just higher level missions here, sorry. And then lower level, but there's a lot of railjack, space combat missions if that's kind of your i guess enjoyment it will take a little bit to unlock this though so keep that in mind it's called railjack and once you unlock it you'll probably want to upgrade your ship a little bit before doing certain quests and play around here but the game does have spaceship to spaceship combat versus enemy AIs. The game also does have PVP, by the way, not spaceship combat PVP, but it has general PVP. It's unsupported for the most part. It's very bad. There's no good incentive to do it, and it's pretty much hated by most people. It's a kind of cheesy, bad game mode, but you can mess around with it if you want. I'm just saying PVP is in the game. And a lot of people aren't aware of that, but hey, this is the map of Warframe. You have all of your like events and objectives up here. You have friend requests like sales, boosters, if you want to check them out there. You have any events going on in the game. Dog days, that's the summer water gun fight uh, event. And then Thermia Fractures, very common reoccurring event that takes place on Neptune, Venus, uh, Fortuna, or Ballas. Sorry, Venus, Fortuna, or Ballas. Yeah. Then you have, outside of that, you have alerts, which are like things you can do. Arbitrations, great game mode to unlock stuff, and you'll eventually unlock it. Whole explanation to go along with that. Another annoying thing about Warframe, it's very hard to get information out of the game. You're going to be Googling things a lot. You have to pay real close attention during quests, but more importantly, you're gonna be Googling things, okay? Warframe wiki, YouTube videos, Reddit, anything. Warframe uh, forums to get like information because this game has so much hidden information and it's very confusing. So here are all the like weekly, daily type alerts, missions, reoccurring missions, Kuva Siphons, nightmare mode missions, a ton of different things to get a ton of different loot, right? 
And you, it doesn't let you know what loot, but some loot. Steal path incursions to get high level items, steal essence to get even more loot. We have invasions here to get parts and, that's right, even more loot. Weapon blueprints and such. Oh, okay. We have syndicates. You run these to get a higher level standing in your uh, faction that you choose, syndicate, in order to just buy some loot out, right? Oh, it's a looter shooter. We're going to be getting and farming a lot of loot and also shooting a lot. And then it has a nice recurring game mode, Sanctuary Onslaught and Elite Sanctuary Onslaught. You can run this anytime once you unlock it. It is the current just like meta leveling map where you just run it, you level quickly, you do it with people. Cool. It's chill. It's calm. It's casual. And it's a fast experience. You don't have to run any super specific setup. Experience shares between teammates as long as they're within like 100 meters or 50 meters, I think. Yeah, 50, I think. I can't remember the affinity share range, experience share range. So as long as you stay near people, get a ton of kills on this type of map, you'll get a lot of experience. But you run these faction maps to get more standing with your faction outside of just the daily cap. And you can also get faction medallions to give you standing. So... It's a way to just earn more standing in order to buy items out of a shop, which I think makes sense. I think it makes complete sense. We have Void Fishers, which are a way to unlock prime relics and relics to get prime items, I should say. So this is a farm. This is pretty much a lot of like mid end game Warframe is just running Void Fishers and getting loot. Again, you can always trade loot off to get a lot of money in game and buy stuff, but takes time. Sortie is a reoccurring daily to get some nice endgame loot. Uh, just like, that's the drop table. Possible endgame loot. If not, just casually good loot, right? And then last but not least on here, we have Archon Hunts, which uh, is essentially a weekly boss fight. Uh, very, very easy mode once you unlock it and get used to it. Everything in the game is easy once you get used to it, right? You unlock for the first time, you might get beat up, but once you build for it and then get your settings going, you're good. And that is a full map generally of the game. You can place resource drones to get loot casually, passively while playing the game. It's just like on a timer, right? Lets you know what items you get. Yeah, I'm not gonna collect stuff, but that's there. Whew, that's the map of Warframe, right? Only took us about 20 minutes to go through it. This is your main mission hub. There's a couple just straight up in the spaceship. And eventually you can land your spaceship on Earth, right? Pretty cool, but I'll just look at the flat out straight up orbiter in space for everyone. This is gonna be more your starting view of the game. You're gonna be flying out in space, right? You have your main mission areas here. You have the news section, goes over weekly news, community news, update highlights, right? Here is Conclave, this is the PVP terminal. Here you can run PVP, people don't really like it, but you can do it, you can do it. Right here is your configure plexus. This is setting up your spaceship once you unlock it, modding your spaceship, setting up your different weapons you have on it and your tactical battle integrated. I don't think you can fully, yeah, you can level up your intrinsic. You can't fully swap out your weapons and like your modules on your railjack here. You have to go to a relay, but you can swap out your railjack mod setup, which is a big boost of its damage. So you can do that in your spaceship. Right here's your standing factions. This is where you can pretty much manage your different factions. They're just in-game syndicates, right? Different factions, it's normal stuff. Level them up, view offerings, buy things from the shop and just play the game passively and you will get faction standing XP. There's a daily cap to it to encourage people to come back every day. You know, like classic free to play capped stuff. I have a bunch of like little bugs on the ground. So they make little noises. Yeah. Here is your codex. This is essentially the game's knowledge base. It's where you can start and search up quests. The game has so many quests. Only so many are main story, but it also has a lot of side quests. If you ever want to re rerun them or anything like that, I think some of them you can rerun here, like begin, rerun, replay. Yeah. Some you cannot, like Vor's uh, Prize, one of the first quests in the game, and awake Awakening. One of the first quests. Awakening into Vor's Prize. So some you can replay, some you can't. Universe is where you can get all general, some info on Warframes, weapons, relics, how to farm and where to farm items. It can be a bit annoying. Doesn't give you drop rates, but yeah, nothing's perfect. That's why I would, rec again, recommend Google. Your best friend is Google, searching up things, Warframe Wiki, a lot of websites. Liberian is actually a cute area where you go to get lore on Warframe, right? Pretty cool. There is a, like, 
just there's a little bit of visuals, but it's mainly an auditory experience of the narrator telling you lore about all of these Warframes, and it's very cool. There's little training missions if you like kind of need to read through how to do things, right? So it has little tutorials here, but it's obviously not fully in depth. And then you have tutorial mission things here. It has all the mission types and you can kind of click on them and how to do it. I don't know if it has like all of them, all of them, but pretty much all of them. That is the Warframe Codex. It's where you go for info. This is the Warframe Market though. This is where you can go to buy everything in game with premium currency, as well as buy things in game with credits in game money. In Warframe, you build weapons. So you need to buy weapons blueprints. A lot of the times you can just purchase weapons with platinum, the premium currency, but you don't want to do that. You either want to buy a weapons blueprint or farm for a weapons blueprint. It doesn't tell you where to farm blueprints in the market, but you can hide items without blueprints. And this is everything you can buy quickly and out of weapons, right? That you can build in game quickly, right? For the most part. There's also a lot of shops in your clan in order to buy and build weapons and warframes, and that's why I'd recommend everyone join a clan. It's actually a crucial part of the game. But this is just the market. It has a lot of toggles here. You don't have to buy a, anything with in-game money. You can farm it out, but obviously you have to figure out how to do that. And blueprints are the main objective of farming in this game. So had to bring that up. There's a lot, as you can see, a lot of stuff in the shop. Weapons, Warframes, bundles, featured stuff, equipment, companions, bundles, Tenogen, Primer Surgeons, get platinum, premium bundles. Oh my god, the game's 12, 11 years old, right? So many cosmetics, so many items. Grind through it, look through the shop if you want, but you don't need to buy anything with premium currency out of the market. You can technically farm everything in game. It's just Warframe slots, weapon slots, and certain time-gated type items you'd have to purchase to bypass it. So that's the market quickly. This is the foundry where you actually build everything. You can have an unlimited amount of things of building at one time. You build weapons, you build warframes, you just build it all, right? You build three parts into a warframe and then build the warframe. It takes like three days to build a warframe or something like that. And it takes some time to build a weapon, right? 12 hours, 12 hours, warframe parts are 12 hours and the warframe itself is three days, 72 hours. So it takes time to build stuff, but since you can build an unlimited amount of things at once, it's not as bad. I know other games maybe cap you on the amount of items you can build, so keep that in mind. You can build as many as you want, so you should be doing that. That's how the foundry works. Other than that, we have a ton of areas, and we'll try to quickly go over them. Mods, these are going to be your main upgrade systems for your weapons and warframes. Straight up boosts. Iotin treasures are items, and you eventually fuse, upgrade, and break down endo, or sorry, iTunes into a resource called endo. But it's not really super relevant. Foundry, you just build stuff. It has like components. You can search around. It has a lot of like sort buys, search toggles. So keep that in mind. Searches, toggles, everything's very important. This is just showing off your companion. This is Arcanes, another well, weapon and Warframe upgrade system. Huge upgrades. You can essentially one shot everything in the game. This is Incubator where you can deal with some of your cat or dog type companions. And this is the main area in Warframe, Tenno Loadout. This is where you can swap, upgrade, and change everything in Warframe, okay? It takes a lot of time, and oh, let me tell you, it's a huge pain in the butt. Wait, give me one sec. Sorry, that was probably just a spam call. Anyways, that's where you go to swap out all of your Warframes and weapons. You go to upgrade, you swap out mods, give them huge boosts to their abilities, throw on arcanes. You go to the weapons, swap them out, upgrade them, huge boost to all of that. Without mods, your weapons are essentially awful. You have to upgrade the capacity with a, an item and then form the individual slots in order to get a full proper build, but it takes a lot less time to do it than some other games and it's very nice like that. A lot of weapons to swap out, as you can see. You collect quite a large amount. Large, large amounts here. Some would say too many, okay? You have Harmony, right? That's my current weapon, but there, there's a lot, right? You have a, a skill tree for your human person that controls your robot, but not really. You'll eventually figure out what that means, right? You have a stabby weapon, ton of weapons, right? These are your companions. These are your gear and emotes. 
This is all of your space combat loadouts. So space combat, it all mods similar but different. All the same idea. Not bad, not bad, not bad at all, okay? That is all there is to that menu. You, I mean, you can spend an endless amount of time in the menus, just checking things out and learning about it, but... Oh boy, you have a lot of fashion and cosmetics. You can change around colors, helmets, skins, animation sets, right? Attachments, right? Shoulder guards, chest guards, all of the like side attachments here, all that. Bunny ears, crown. Whew. Crazy. So that's all, all of it. Right, you have skins. I have a skin on this one. Okay. Endless amount of customization, okay? Almost done here, almost done here. Relics, which are again, how you unlock and upgrade primes. And you can upgrade your relics as just playing the game to have better high drop rates for better higher tier stuff all the time, all the time. Go out through here, your ship. This is mainly just uh, some quest stuff kind of, but it's mainly cosmetic area. You pimp things out, make it look very pretty. You got a lot of side stuff, look at space. And then over here, we have a couple other systems. This'll be your Upgrade person system, right? This is your human system. You'll go there eventually. Awesome. And this is your area system where you swap out and have different abilities on your different Warframes. It requires the base Warframe to get killed and eaten by the chair, essentially, by this guy. He's just a cool dude, right? He likes to say hi. He interacts with your pet, gives him kisses, sometimes sucks him up. He runs around. Very adorable. Very cute. You so adorable. And yeah, it's a whole room there. It's pretty massive, right? But this is Warframe in the current year of 2024. 11, 12 years worth of stuff. So many quests to do. It's a huge grind. And it is not for the faint of heart. It's like starting a long time MMO in five, 10, five years after it starts. It's a huge process. Lots to learn. A billion different things, challenges, syndicates. And you'll have to like search up a lot of it. Because look at all that. Endless amount of fun if you have fun and enjoy your time here. Let me know what you think about my little review chatting about the game, but dear God, is it a grind. And there's obviously hours I could show off of different missions, areas, hubs, visuals, but I'll cut it short at about 30 minutes here and say that is Warframe. Thank you all for joining, subbing, liking, checking out any random videos of mine where I either yell at clouds or just shitpost or just do nothing. You never know. Maybe it's a guide, maybe it's a shitpost, right? But I do appreciate it. I have an Epic Games creator code Pupsker if you ever want to support the channel. I usually stream twitch.tv slash Pupsker and just run a 24 seven stream. So you can always swing by, sub or just AFK, watch stream if you want to support the channel. I do VODs when I'm usually sleeping or AFK for long amounts of time. You never know. Either way, thank you all so much and we will continue making videos on video games that we want to play. Cheers.